gentleman. Now recognize the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to start, Mr. Chairman, by uh, thanking uh, nurses and doctors, hospital workers, soldiers, uh, and others for their courage and their service and their sacrifice. Uh, most of us, uh, Mr. Chairman, in life run away from danger and disease and risk, and very few people are willing to run toward it. So I want to start by thanking that group of people. Uh, Dr. Lurie, I want to read you a quote and tell, you tell me if you can uh, tell me who the author of this quote is. Beginning with the development of a strategy, my role can be defined as helping our country to be ready for any kind of adverse public health event, including a response to any challenges the future may bring. Do you know who said that? Who? You did. That's exactly right. In Penn Medicine article. And your bio page says that you are the Secretary for Preparedness and Response, and your work has included evaluating public health preparedness, conducting 32 tabletop exercises on hypothetical crises such as smallpox, anthrax, botulism, plague, pandemic influenza. Another story on you and your career, uh, which is an incredibly commendable career, said your job is to plan for the unthinkable. A global flu pandemic, she has a plan. A bioterror attack, she's on it. Massive earthquake, yep, she's got a plan. It's a mission that includes both science and a communication strategy. So I was sitting there, Dr. Lurie, thinking, here we have a doctor with an incredible background in medicine who also happens to have planned for crises like Ebola whose job description also includes communication strategy. So why in the hell did the president pick a lawyer to be the Ebola czar and not you? So I appreciate your questions. Um, before I answer your question, can I take just one moment to clarify the, my answer about the quarantine question? Because I think I didn't understand it fully. CDC has ample quarantine authority to do what it needs to do. I think the, pro and it's used those authorities many, many times. The proposed regulation would have refined the process we, we have used, but the underlying statute already gives CDC the authority that it's needed. Okay. So with that you, clarification, the, I just the wanted record to is now complete with Thank respect you. to your position on, right. on quarantine. Okay. Now, I want the record to be complete on why in the world the president picked a dadgum lawyer to head the Ebola crisis instead of somebody with your vast and varied background. And I appreciate the vote of confidence. The role of the Ebola coordinator in the White House is a whole of government coordination role. Well, it's well not, it's I, not a I appreciate that, Dr. Lurie, but, but Mr. Klain is not a doctor. He's not an osteopath. He's not a nurse. He's not an epidemiologist. He doesn't have a background in communicable disease. He doesn't have a background in infectious disease. He doesn't have a background in West Africa. So how in the world is he the best person to be the Ebola czar and not you? Or, and I don't want to hurt her career. I, I do not want to hurt Secretary Burwell's career, and I fear that I will by complimenting her. But she's an incredibly bright person. One of the more capable people I have met in the last 10 years is your boss, the secretary of HHS. Now, we disagree in fairness to her on lots of policy, but, but she actually has a background through her work, the Gates Foundation, in global health. You're a doctor. I mean, if this were an outbreak of people who don't have wills in West Africa, or if this were an outbreak on contested elections in West Africa, then I'd say, yeah, go hire Mr. Klain. But it's not. It's a medical crisis. So why not you? So right now, I have a full-time job doing my job in the Department of Health and Human Services. I really appreciate the vote of confidence, and I have a lot of confidence in Mr. Klain. Well, how about another doctor? How about somebody who's, who, who's an expert in infectious disease or an expert in, in West Africa or the delivery of health care? I mean, how, I mean, God forbid we pick somebody with a background in medicine instead of a dadgum lawyer. And, and, and in the interest of full disclosure, I am one. But, but, so but, so with, with respect, I think that the role of the coordinator at the White House doesn't require a doctor. It requires somebody who is really expert at coordination and bringing the parts of government together 
to enhance the coordination. Well, I'm going to make you this promise, okay? And I want you to hold me to it, okay? The next time there's an opening on the Supreme Court, I want you to see whether or not the president considers a doctor or a dentist for that job. And, and, and we actually are about to have a, a vacancy at, at, for our attorney general. And I want you to consider or, or, or be mindful of whether or not he considers uh, maybe like a tattoo artist to be our next attorney general. I promise he will not. He will pick a lawyer for the Supreme Court, and he will pick a lawyer to be the head of the attorney general of the Department of Justice. I, I'm just lost as to why he wouldn't pick somebody with a medical or health care background to be the Ebola czar. I, I, I mean, can you understand why people might possibly think this could perhaps be a political pick instead of a medical science health pick. Can you understand how people might be just a little bit suspicious? I can understand the public's concerns about a whole variety of issues. I believe that Mr. Klain has tremendous experience in doing the job that well, he has chosen Well, cite me all his medical background then. Uh, I, I was going to let you go, but you said he has tremendous Tremendous experience. Cite me all of his medical, infectious disease, communicable disease, health care delivery background. You know, one of the terrific things about the way the government works together is that experts come together all the time. I'm going to take that answer as a he has none. There are a tremendous number of doctors that he has. He has me, he has Dr. Frieden, he has Dr. Fauci, he has Dr. Collins. You could go on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, and it would just make, it, but you know what? We had access to all those people before we had Mr. Klein. All those people worked for the government before the president hired Mr. Klain, didn't they? So why pick a lawyer to head our response to Ebola? It just, you know, color me cynical. It just appears to be political. But with that, Mr. Chairman, I would yield back. Would, would my friend yield? Of course I will yield to the gentleman from Virginia. Well, I, I just wanted to uh, join my friend in calling for a non-lawyer appointment to the Supreme Court. It would be the healthiest damn thing we've had in the last 50 years. Thank you. Are you applying? Are you interested? 